Hussein on BVB. Yeah. What is up, Big Z? How are you? Welcome back to BVB. What's going on, guys? How you guys doing today? We're great, sir. How are you? You look awesome. Fresh off the trip. How was the trip before we get into the business? How was the trip? It was beautiful. We went to uh, Spain for about a week and a half, and then we went to Morocco in Marrakesh. Believe it or not, we left one week before the earthquake, which Yikes. is some serious stuff. Huge earthquake hit Morocco, um, which was like we were literally right where it hit. So it could have been bad for us, but um, it's really unfortunate. Prayers out to everyone in Morocco, if anyone mm -hmm. in the chat's here. Um, yeah, a lot of unfortunate stuff going on over there, sadly. Well, Z, there's a lot of unfortunate stuff going on here in Vegas, and there's a big fight card tomorrow night. Mm -hmm. T correct me. It's on ESPN Plus. Is it a pay-per-view or just a subscription deal tomorrow night here in Vegas for this fight card? Yeah, so it's uh, Mexican Independence Day. It's a subscription ESPN Plus free title fight that they're doing. Um, very, very big card for a fight night, as they would say. Um, they're doing huge, like right? Have they ever done a fight night card with a title fight, a title shot at the top? Yeah, this is last time I would say is probably like the Fox deal, like back in the day where they had like Oof. Dominic Cruz fighting back then, um, for the title. But amazing fight card. If you're in Vegas, like you could get tickets dirt cheap right now, like three, four hundred dollars for like floor seats. So, like, if I was in Vegas right now, I, I'd be at the fight tomorrow. Yeah. There's no buzz. I just told Dave, there's it's like you, yeah. I, I literally yesterday on the show, I was like, wait. Is it a fight night or pay-per-view? Well, it's not a pay-per-view, but it's on ESPN Plus. But wait a minute. It's Shevchenko. Valentina is fighting, and it's not a pay-per-view. It's $9 a month, and you can go ahead and watch this fight. It's going to be – I mean, in, in the fight community, it's a big card. We'll get to the title fight here in, in, in a second. But overall, top to bottom, how's the card? You know, the card, honestly, there's a lot of good fights. Uh, my biggest fight that I look forward to to seeing and, and have my eyes on is Jasmine Jet Jez Davisius against uh, – Cortez, Tracy Cortez, which is a big fight. Um, priced at about even, I think you could get Jasmine right now, like plus 100. And she's yeah. someone that I've been very, very high on. Um, she looked very good against Miranda Maverick. Her only loss was against Natalie Silva, who's on literally a 10-fight win streak. So she's faced tough competition. She's done well. And Cortez is someone I'm not really high on. Um, I think this line should obviously be flip-flopped the other way. I would price Jasmine around minus 150. And you could get her at plus 100 right now. So that's something that stuck out to me on the card as one of my biggest bets. It's moving right now, Z. I mean, the, the, the guys in the rooms are watching the show, <laughs> and they just heard what you said, and they actually moved it. Cortez at DraftKings just went to 125, so you can get plus 105 Ooh. is the best price, it looks like, in the market on – how do you say her last name? Just like Jasmine. 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 <laughs> Jasmine. Vicious. Man, I oh, could have messed that up. Thank goodness yeah. you're here, Z. Um, <laughs> I'm going to let you two get – deeper into the the card as far as because yeah. you're both fight guys and and you love this stuff but the but the main event grasso and svechenko <laughs> Shevche shevchenko valentina shevchenko. just call her valentina valentina yeah all right title fight it's minus 170 plus 150 as high as minus 180 plus 160 in a couple places um listen i don't want to put any pressure on you last time you came on you hit us with a banger, and the chat went nuts. Everybody bet a fight that they didn't even know about, and it was a good win. Anything with the title fight that you're looking at, either total or side? Yeah, I'm I'm on the side here of Valentina Shevchenko. I think she comes back here. Um, you guys got to remember, this is a rematch. The first fight, Shevchenko, I think, closed around minus 800, if I'm correct. Um, oh, yeah. It's one of the biggest and, upsets in the history of the sport. Yeah, yeah and, and Shevchenko was winning that fight, you know, two to one, three to one, I think, um, yep. into the fourth round. And got she caught. threw a spinning back kick. She kind of slipped on a banana peel, got caught, and ended up getting choked out. But that's a fight where she was dominating with her wrestling and being able to take it to the ground, which was basically, you know, her pet's victory here in this fight again. I think this is a market overreaction here on, on the Grasso side. I think it should be around minus 250 to minus 300 range for Shevchenko. And you could get her at minus 175 right now. I think it's a real bargain. Okay. First, you gave me a Dana White Contender Series ticket that I cashed earlier in the week. So I appreciate you throwing that at me because I never would have bet that fight. And I jumped in on it heavy and I appreciate you. So that was awesome. Thank you for that little tip. I not, hadn't seen you since you gave that, me that tip. The way that fight went in the first time with Grasso and, 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 and Shevchenko has got me at least pondering the over four and a half rounds. That fight was going to the cards. 
And then, like you mentioned, Grasso, who's got a very sneaky ground game, got a hold of the neck, spun down, and choked out Valentina. She did not. I, I thought she tapped kind of quick, but she's not normally in that position with somebody on her back with her neck being exposed. So she tapped Grasso with a huge upset. Does the fight go to the cards, or can Valentina stop Grasso? Because I think you're right. I think I think Bullet wins this, but how and when is my question. I think this is a decision type of fight. I don't think she stands and wins with her. Um, I mean, we saw in, in the first fight, you know, Grasso had success in the first round on the feet, and it's not like her, her boxing is not that bad. But right. Shevchenko knows where her path to victory is in this fight, and that's the wrestling. And she has great headlock. She has great shots. You know, she sets her stuff up really well. I think she plays it safe here. And it's more of like, like, you know, we saw Amanda Nunez against Juliana Pena. She got finished the first time out. She came back in the rematch, and she looked dominant. And I think that's kind of what we're going to see in this fight, but it's going to be on the wrestling side. She doesn't stand and bang with her here. I think she wins a, a kind of a boring decision, to be honest with you guys. I think she lays on her for about three to four rounds and just banks those rounds in. That's what it was against Joanna. When when that fight happened and everybody was like, oh my God, here we go with it. With, you know, you have Chechek fight. It's like, it's going to be such, you know, it's going to be a, such a great fight. It was five rounds. It was boring. It, it, it wasn't a great fight. It was an okay fight. And it was won by Valentina just by outpointing her. So I, I, I'm with you. I think the fight to go the distance. I think over four and a half rounds. I think Chevchenko by decision. I think all those things are are live. Where are you on the debate about Shevchenko being the best of all time? Because by my count, this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. This is her tenth consecutive title fight. Like this is ridiculous. Every time she's fighting, she's on. She's going for a belt. Yeah, I mean, greatest of all time is she's right up there. But I mean, when you look at what Amanda Nunes has done, and I know she's retired now, but. Amanda Nunez beating her multiple times, you know, yes. and then just just her dominant performances after dominant performance, and then comes back and beats Juliana Pena. You know, she she's the, the greatest of all time right now for me. And I think it's it's exciting though to see like like women's MMA just evolving. There's more and more up and coming killers like Erin Blanchfield's coming up. Uh, she had a great fight against Talia Santos. All these fighters are just improving and evolving, and and the sport's getting huge. I got a question from the yeah. chat. Okay, they're looking at the co-main mm -hmm. Kevin Holland. And Jack, Jack Della Madalena. Madalena? <laughs> yeah, you Mr. got it. Mr. John Dabalina. That was part of a rap song. Mr. John Dabalina. Mr. John Dabalina. Anyhow, it's Dabalina. minus 150. And the boys in the chat see it moving down. Minus 145. Two and a half with the under heavily juiced. What is your thoughts about that fight, Z? Yeah, so that's that's a big, big fight, and, and it's a fight that's being overlooked. And like you guys mentioned, this whole card just being slept on. For me, Kevin Holland is the side in this fight. And, you know, you have to take the dog here at this price at a plus 130, plus 125, because to me, this at worst should be a pick em minus 110 both sides. I think Jack Della Maddalena is criminally overrated, honestly. Ooh. You saw his last fight against Basile Hafez, who took the fight on literally a week notice, came out and arguably won the fight. You know, Jack Della book the split decision win, which is very, very questionable. Um, when you look at Kevin Holland's past, he hasn't really been outstruck on the feet by a lot of guys. The only person that's been able to outstrike him is Stephen Wonderboy Thompson, who's the best kickboxer in the UFC. So mm -hmm. it's like when you look at Kevin Holland, his durability and his his ability is going to have the reach here. Um, he's, he's bigger. I just think overall you have to go with Kevin Holland, who's more experienced as well in the cage now. Um, at plus 130, if you're going to bet this fight, you have to take the underdog here. I like your play a lot. I watched his fight against Chiesa and that Darce choke that he pulled on him was kind of like, wait, wow, that was fast. Now, is that because Michael Chiesa is on the way out and that was sort of just his swan song? And or is it that Holland really is a guy that after his loss, he had back to back losses to Hasman and, and then to Thompson, but he seemingly has turned things around. Could it go inside the distance? Do you think the fight goes to the cards or Holland by decision or Holland either by knockout or submission? Yeah, it's tough. You know, I mean, both fighters are, are very durable, to be honest with you. You know, Holland could take a punch. Jack Della could take a punch. But overall, when you look at Holland's past schedule, don't let that fool you of those two losses. Like, he he fought Chemaev. I mean, you guys remember that whole mix-up. Oh, yeah. where they, they had to shuffle three fights around. Like, it was crazy. And then and then he fights Steve Wonderboy Thompson, who he doesn't wrestle. He stands and, and strikes with Steve Wonderboy Thompson, which is the worst possible thing you could do. Um, now, overall, I think he's being overlooked in this spot. I think he is, he is the side. And at plus 130, you have to take him. But, I mean, I wouldn't mess with, like, the over-under here because both fighters are very durable. If anything, I think it's Holland by decision. All right, pivot. We got to sure. pivot. They want to hear about the football Friday. It's football Friday, et cetera, et cetera. 
I wrote it down here. There were 140 entries in the circuit contest that went 5-0. and oh. There were 916 entries that went 4-1. and one. We might know a guy or two that had a pretty good week in the football, if you know what I'm saying. I'm just saying. I'm not saying. I don't want to put the Maloik on it because I believe in the Maloik and the power. So I'm not putting the eyes on you. But what games are you looking at, Z, for the NFL on Sunday? And please don't tell me one of them is the Bears. Ooh. No, absolutely not. And thank God. And that, yeah, it's just, I mean, you, you see what I came on with the Ravens jersey last time. I mean, my yeah. Bears is just, I watch them play every week and I just, I, I don't know what to do anymore. It's just, I can't, I can't handle it. I can't handle it. So I'm on the Chargers, honestly, uh, for, for one of my best bets. I think wow. minus three, this is a team that, Obviously, they always have a problem defending, but they have no problem scoring offensively. And the Titans are going to be behind here. Can the Titans really keep up and score 30 points to, you know, match the Chargers? I don't see it because they didn't look that great last week. And that's one of my best picks. Um, Another thing I'm looking at, Ravens plus three and a half. Okay. The Ravens this year, I want to read a stat um, that yep. I saw on Twitter, which regular season underdog Lamar Jackson, 10-0-1 lifetime. Regular season dog. Wow. 10 one That's a stat I saw on Twitter. I just want to confirm if somebody could you worry about that. the Dobbins injury. Like that doesn't, that, that hurts them a little bit. No. Nah. Yeah. I mean, you nah. got Justice Hill. You got Gus Edwards. You got, okay. I mean, yeah. every year Dobbins is down after week one, week two. It's like, right. it's that's, same, that's, that's just, been the case. Yes. Yeah. And, and you know, also uh, Lamar's their best running back anyway. So, I mean, as long as. Lamar is healthy. It, it just moved down to three to from three and a half, actually. So we just saw someone come in and buy that to get that off of the three and a half. So we're back to three at FanDuel, at least uh, for the Ravens and the Bengals. What do you make of the Jaguars being home dogs to the Chiefs catching three and a half? Yes, here comes Kelsey. Yes, here comes Chris Jones. But can Jacksonville make a statement here? I don't think so. I think, you know, the Colts were on their way to doing something special before Anthony Richardson went down. And I saw a lot of sharp money early in the week come in on KC after, you know, Kelsey was announced that he's probably going to play. And I think they just confirmed it about 30 minutes ago. Kelsey and Jones are both playing. Yeah. Um, I'm on the KC side as well. I think this is a nice bounce back spot for them. They should have won last week if Kadarius Tony didn't drop like three, four balls. Um, I think this is a great bounce back spot for them. And I'm on KC here. Um uh, Kelsey coming back. You you have you have to ride Casey here in a bounce back spot. San Francisco's playing the Rams. The line's seven and a half. It was eight, little money on the Rams, but is this too easy? I mean, everybody's using it in the survivor. If you're gonna use San Francisco, it's not a bad time to use them, but if you want to save them, we'll we'll find a couple other games. But this is this San Francisco, P. Roth said it earlier in the week. He's right. San Francisco owns the Rams. I mean, is this something you're even interested in, or is this a number that makes you you pause and go, ah, I'll find another game? You, you hit it on the head at the end. It's it's more of like a number where it's like, ah, uh, I'll find another game because the Rams didn't look that bad last week. Like they, they were a solid, solid mm -hmm. squad. And mm -hmm. I know the Niners look great, and Brock Purdy actually played great as well. But I mean, the Steelers were just awful week one i'm sorry you guys were like my bears week one it was just <laughs> terrible I, they, you're right you're right you're right they were terrible they were terrible uh, all right Z, yeah. before, they, before they let you go give us one play for the ufc you like the best and one play for sunday in the nfl you like the best so we're gonna go jasmine jazz the plus 100 plus 105 shop around and then we have to go with the chargers as my best bet for this week in the nfl too many points titans won't keep up Good stuff, my friend. Thank you for coming on. We appreciate you. We'll see you soon, all right? Thanks, guys. Take care. Z joining us here. Zaid Hussein on B 